so hi there YouTube, here's an old vlogger with you. Today we're going to be taking a quick look into an shell in its final release and this is inside of my live CD of Fedora 15 laptop in its beta release. So for a start the, let me show you the versions that I'm using here. Um, as you can see here I'm using Fedora 15 laptop in its beta release, you can see the release notes here and above GNOME shell I'm using the final release as you can see here this is a 64-bit live system so let's start a change interesting changes in GNOME shell um, in the final release uh, about or in comparison with the alpha releases and the beta releases um, are the, um, the dashboard for example we have bigger icons for the apps and also uh, all the apps have icons uh, in the alpha releases and beta releases not all the apps have icons but now all the apps have icons so that's great um, if you have many apps you will have here a scroll bar um, with which one you will be able to to browse between your apps and select the apps you want to use um, this final version of GNOME Shell also have a lot of bug fixes uh, for example in the alpha releases and the beta releases of GNOME Shell we weren't able to open more than one terminal but now we can uh, let me show you we just click on this dash icon right clicking and select new window and we can open as many windows of terminals or terminals as what we want mm, as you can see here I have my four terminals also another good thing in GNOME Shell Final is the arrangement of virtual desktops because I can drag some apps and <coughs> order them in the desktops uh, in this breakpad so that's great um, problems in GNOME Shell are still in there uh, for example we have the annoying bug with flash uh, so in this GNOME 3 final release you might not be able to install flash using the repositories or an rpm package or binary packages um, you have to, to use a tarball and extract the flash player into your browser's um, plugins folder because um, GNOME Shell do, do not have compatibility uh, compatibility with Flash Player, so that's kind of annoying, but it might be fixed in the <coughs> upcoming releases. Uh, another, another cool change in GNOME Shell Final is the Activities menu. I feel it more responsive now, as you can see. Maybe it's my imagination, I don't know, but I feel the Activities menu very, <coughs> very responsive now in comparison with the alpha and the beta releases so that's great um, other bad thing in GNOME Shell Final is the lack of a background feeling I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say but let me show you an example <coughs> for example if I open many apps like here Let's open a terminal, Firefox, Rhythm Box, Shotwell. <coughs> and we have a lot of, of apps here as you can see. Um, these apps are arranged in the activi in the activities menu under the Windows tab, so that's great. The apps um, look amazing here, but if I go to my desktop, all the apps kind of overlay one on top of the other and that's kind of annoying because we do not have a background feeling in the desktop to minimize the apps I have to do a right click in the title bar and click minimize because we do not have a minimize button and <coughs> that way I can simulate a background feeling in GNOME Shell final I don't like that lack of background feeling <coughs> personally um, other thing that is improved and also really awesome in GNOME Shell or GNOME Shell Final um, is the notification system. We have two notification system in GNOME Shell. Um, for example, we have we have the bottom notifications uh, that are the the system notifications. 
in these notifications um, they are kind of interactive uh, for example if you're chatting in an IM clinic client like empathy or picking you will be able to to answer um, to your chat uh, uh, <coughs> writing the notification without opening the the IM client window so that's great also the apps have their, their own notifications for example let me open the edit <coughs> and here for example if I close my document a floating notification will appear here and tell me what I want to do all the applications have a floating notification system integrated so that's great um, really fancy so here we are in fallback mode, uh, as I promised. As you can see here, um, it reminds the it reminds me the non-classic environment, but it is not like that. The non-fallback mode, non-pre-fallback mode, is more an effort to bring the non-shell functions into less powerful systems without 3D acceleration in their hardware. Um, it's not a fallback for the users that miss the NOM2 functionality because uh, this fallback mode do not have uh, a lot of the NOM2 functionality that we're used to in the past. We were used to in the past. Um, the top bar or top panel is a lot like the NOM shell top panel, uh, but it has 2D animations instead or 2D functions instead of 3D animations as you can see. We have our user menu, we have the notification area, we have the calendar and time applet, we have the applications menu, um, a lot like like in the num 2 environment uh, with the apps uh, grouped uh, in, in groups. Uh, sorry for being redundant that there, but well, we have also the places um, and the bottom bar is not in bottom, but the task bar. Uh, let me open some apps to show you. As you can see here, we are opening a lot of apps, or well, some apps, Firefox, um, <coughs> and you and you can see that the bottom bar is acting like a task bar, um, where I can close or move or do whatever I want with my apps. But it is nothing um, than that. It's just a a simple taskbar. Um, about the fallback mode, uh, there is nothing much to say. Uh, it's just like a non to kind of environment, but without the functions. The functions are more uh, like the non tree functions without tree deceleration. Um, we do not have applets or or other kind of stuff. And well, in the previous versions, it was a little ugly, but now it is. Um, Really, really improved in the visual in the visual part of, of it. So that's great. And this is fallback mode. Uh, well, to end this video, uh, just let me clear two things up. Uh, the first thing I want to clear up is that, um, for example, if you want to install Flash in NOM3 shell in a 64-bit system, the 32-bit graphic version will not work. You have to use the 64-bit turbo for the uh, Flash Player Square Beta uh, because it's the only uh, thing uh, that is going to work to install Flash in, in NOM3 shell. You have to extract the, the plugin to the browser's uh, plugin folder, as I said before. And well, about the wallpaper, um, the supplemental wallpaper for the other desktops like KDE, STXE, and LXDE, I want to show it to you. Let me let me switch the wallpaper here. And here it is, a little pixelated uh, because it's a small Im image um, picture uh, that I used to to put it in the screen. But well, this is going to be the, the default wallpaper for KDE and other desktop environments in Fedora 15 Love Block uh, in the final release. Um, and well, uh, with this I end the video and hope you like uh, you like it. So goodbye. See you next time.